We're live? All right. Good morning, everybody. I'd like to welcome you all to our first uh, panel at South by Southwest, Line Webtoons Women in Digital Comics. Woo! Woo! <laughs> and hi to everybody watching on Twitch. Uh, we have a great panel today and only 45 minutes to get through it, so we'll jump right into it. Uh, first, I'm going to introduce my fellow panelists. Sitting to my immediate right, she was one of the winners of our superhero comics contest with Stan Lee. Uh, her comic, Supersonic Girl, just launched a few days ago. Joining us all the way from Spain, Sandra Diaz. <laughs> Next to Sandra, you're probably familiar with her from her hit CBS show, Two Broke Girls. Uh, and she just launched a film with Sally Field, Hello, Hello My Name is Doris, last weekend. Uh, the co-creator of Dents, which is launching in a few short weeks, Beth Bears. Next to Beth is a creator who came up through our line, Webtoon Discover, where anyone can upload their comics. Um, her, latest, her last comic, Where Tangents Meet, was read over 9 million times. Uh, and her latest comic, which just launched last week, Siren's Lament, I'm not sure if it's hit a million. Do we, have a, do we know? Has it crossed the million read in just the first week? If not, it's, I'm looking for somebody to say, <laughs> give me a thumbs yes, up. It did. It, <laughs> Either it's just been read a million times, or it's just short of a million, but either way, it's, uh, it's crazy impressive. Joining us from San Diego, Caitlin Nervaza. <laughs> Next to Caitlin, um, I'm sure a lot of you know her from her YouTube channel, which has, I think, nearly 9 million subscribers, or her beauty company, Ipsy, or is one of Forbes 2015 30 Under 30. Uh, her debut comic, Helios Femina, just launched this morning. You should go check it out right after the panel. Michelle Fan. <laughs> And finally, uh, our last panelist comic, Shoot Around, was recognized by Comics Alliance as one of the best five digital comics of 2015. Joining us all the way from Finland, Susanna Nusinian? Nusinian. Nusinian. That. <laughs> so in a moment, we'll hear about each creator's titles. But first, for those unfamiliar, I'm going to give a quick background on Line Webtoon. Uh, for those who are unfamiliar, we're a digital comics publisher with what I feel is the best comics app in the world. Uh, we're on iOS, Android, tablets, mobile web, desktop. 80% uh, of our readers are mobile, uh, so we are very mobile first and mobile focused as a publisher. All of our comics are free to users, and all of our comics come with some, with some very rare exceptions, are 100% creator owned, including all of our panelists. Uh, we have a deep set of features that I'm not going to get into now. But if you think a comic app should be able to do something, it's probable we're already doing it or it's already in our product pipeline. Uh, to give a brief history, we launched in Korea in 2004, and our founder, Jinko Kim, is here with us today. Please stand up. <laughs> He's the reason all this exists. Um, we launched in 2014 globally, just about 18 months ago. Uh, in that time span to today, we've had we have over 6 million daily readers of our comics over 17 million monthly readers, and there have to date been over 30 billion chapters of comics read, with a B, um, 10 million of which are Caitlin's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now I'd like each of the panelists to tell us a little bit about the comic that we're working on, and then we'll get right into the state of the industry. So first, uh, Michelle, if you can tell us a little bit about Helios Femina. Yeah, Helios Femina is a story, a comic that I've been developing since I was 11. And it's a hero's journey and an anti-hero's journey. So it's going to play on the two roles of duality where someone wants to save the world and another person doesn't care to save the world. So it's going to be really interesting to play out the story. But what I'm most excited about is really just working on this platform because I have unlimited um, uh, space to really just develop the story without having to worry about pages and everything. So I'm really excited about this. Yay! <laughs> And Caitlin, if you could tell us a bit about Siren's Lament. Oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> um, Siren's Lament is about a fantasy romance with mermaids, but with a dark twist. <laughs> um, it's about a girl named Lyra. She's an ordinary girl. Uh, she's kind of a wallflower, but she's content with her ordinary life. And. The only thing is that her longtime crush, Sean, has a girlfriend. So while she's heartbroken, um, she runs into a male siren. And something goes wrong because <clears throat> she, 
Um, she, she, um, she turns into a half siren. So out of water, she's a human, but in the water, she is a siren. So she gets tangled up in this curse, and basically she's just trying to figure out how to get out of it. Awesome. Uh, Beth, can you tell us a little bit about Dents, please? Sure. Um, my co-creator is right over there, Matt Doyle. We've been, yay! <laughs> We've been best friends since um, we were in freshman in high school. And so uh, Matt actually had a dream about twins with superpowers a long time ago. And over a lot of wine a few years ago, he told me the idea. And we were like, that's awesome, then forgot about it. And then a few years later, uh, I was friends with Tom and heard about Line Webtoon and was a huge fan of what they're doing. And I was like, Matt and I talked and came up with it and decided we were going to make it a comic. And it's been great. It's, uh, our, our, it's a female protagonist. Her name's Eleanor. And it's kind of Frozen meets X-Men meets Hunger Games because she's on this uh, journey basically to find uh, her sister who um, we find out is also a dent, dent is a dent in society and they're twins with superpowers in a post-apocalyptic world and we set it in San Francisco um, Bay Area where we grew up but like completely underwater and uh, glaciers melting and made it um, the Golden Gate Bridge completely underwater and yeah we're really excited. Awesome. Sandra can you tell us a bit about Supersonic Girl? Oh. Um, first of all, uh, I want to excuse my English speaking. <laughs> uh, Supersonic Girl, it is my first published work, and I feel very happy to do it on Webtoon. Uh, the story is about uh, the, double, the secret double life of a teenage girl as a superhero. She will have to fight the, the evil while she deals with the complicated high school, high school life. And it is like a mix of the classic superhero and magical girl. Um, that's, that's it. And it's <laughs> and Susanna, can you tell us about Shoot Around? Yeah, uh, Shoot Around is a comic I started uh, like a year and a half ago, and the idea started with. I was watching Jurassic Park and I was laughing about Jeff Goldblum's character <laughs> <laughs> because he does nothing in the movie except he's like lying around with his shirt open. <laughs> <And> <laughs> I thought, thought it was <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a really funny concept to take that uh, um, the main character would essentially be sort of useless. So I started devel developing around that concept and the main character or one of the main characters in my comic is. Uh, Jeff, I call him Coach Jeff because he is uh, the coach of a girls' high school basketball team. And the concept was of having Jeff be sort of useless. Uh, I mean, he gets bit by the first zombie he meets, <laughs> and all the other girls are the girls are sort of like they watched a lot of zombie me movies and. They do pretty well in the apocalypse, <laughs> and Jeff, Jeff just lies around and, and sort of goes along with the flow. And that's the concept of shoot around. <laughs> so before we get into our conversation, I'm going to talk for a minute and provide you guys some statistics about the state of the industry uh, and kind of where Line Webtoon sits within it. So, you know, some news headlines that I think kind of capture a little bit what we're going to talk about today on MTV, why 2016 was the need to stop pretending women aren't geeks. That's a fantastic article on their site with lots of information and data um, breaking down uh, audience and creators um, across all types of media. And uh, the Washington Post put up a Comic-Con 2015 and gender parody article, why the geek stereotype will soon be dead, that kind of talks about the parody and attendance at conventions, um, which kind of leads us into readership and audience. So uh, this data is slightly old, but it's very difficult to find um, readership uh, demographic data from comic companies. But in 2012, and this was released by DC themselves, that you know, New 52 readership was 93% male. Um, and then as far as the audience, these are not super scientific studies, but there's ongoing Facebook studies on graphic policy about the size of the comic fan audience being between 41 and 48% female in the US, and uh, obviously Comic-Con uh, Comic-Cons across the world really know their demographics because they get the registration information, and about 50% of Comic-Con attendees are female. So there's obviously, even though that data is a little bit old, a massive delta there. 
Um, this is the percentage of comic creators by publisher, and a big thank you to, Dim, uh, to Tim Hanley at Bleeding Cool for some of this data, and I apologize if a couple of these percentages are slightly off. This is the most recent stuff I had when we put together the uh, deck. So you can kind of see across the industry, 15% roughly of uh, female creators, of, uh, creators by publisher are female, with Boom doing pretty well at 36%, but Boom represents a much smaller percentage of the industry when you add all these together. And on the content side, only one in four comic characters at the big two are female, and the percentage of comics with female leads is 18% compared with the percentage of comics with male leads at 48%, and the balance being um, generally teen books. Now, online webtoon readership. So we're super proud of this statistic. Our global and our US readership is 50% female. We just released this recently, um, and we've talked about it in the past, and we have a few reasons for this readership being this way. Uh, one is our creators. Globally, our creators are 40% female, and in the US, it's 42% female, not even counting things like Dense, which hasn't launched yet, because we took this off of the active titles on the site. Um, and globally, just to give some context to that number, that's 123 female creators working with us on active titles across the globe. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, woo. Yeah. <laughs> Those are great numbers. <laughs> Uh, and then when it gets to the content, 40% of our female uh, series globally feature a female protagonist in the US. That's 48% featuring a female lead versus 36% with a male lead and 16% um, talking dogs, uh, neutral, whatever we have that sort of <laughs> <laughs> doesn't fit in there. Um, again, you can see where that like, basically flips what's going on in the rest of the US in terms of uh, you know, content developed for, for women. And then this is just an example of some of our top series. Um, all these are available now. Uh, you should go on. There's tons and tons of comics for women on our site. They're all free. Now, we'll leave this up while we talk a little bit with our creators about this. So first question is for Sandra. Sandra, you're the only one up here doing a superhero comic. Um, what is your opinion of the current superhero comic landscape, which is a little bit about what some of those numbers kind of indicate, um, and its representation of female heroes and villains? Well, I, I think it's, it's obvious that superheroes the superhero genre is getting more popular than ever. And also among girls, there are coming out lots of female superheroes with their own ser series. And girls are getting more interested in reading that, that comics and also in creating them. So, um. so for other panelists, um, you guys are sort of doing all sci-fi, well, you three are doing like sci-fi fantasy. You're doing almost zombie apocalypse comedy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's the genre. That's, that's the genre, right? Yeah. It's fair. I made it up. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright. Um, so th then to Susanna, like, so what's, what's, you have the most diverse group of characters of, of almost any comic we have on the site. Kind of like, what is, like, what's the reason for that? Like, what does diversity mean to you? Um, and like, what are the inspiration behind all those different characters? Uh, well, First of all, I didn't start this way. Like uh, a lot of my first comics were like the main cast was almost all male, and uh, I just uh, at some point I started th thinking about how a lot of other people need representation as well in the media, and uh, I guess I just started reading about uh, different people and their experiences and uh, how much they'd like for like. Uh, to have someone like them in the media. So I started thinking about that more and I started incorporating it into my comics and stories. And yeah, it's... <laughs> and your reception's been great to that, right? Yeah, I have a lot of uh, people really like it and they, a lot of the comments are like, oh my God, I can't believe I have a character like me in this comic and I've never had a zombie comic with a trans woman as a main character and uh, stuff like that, and it's, uh, it makes all the research and stuff like that worth it then, to have people be happy. That's awesome. Um, so, for, I'm going through my questions here. For Michelle, you're coming primarily from a beauty background, which is a, like a dominated female industry. Um, what's your experience been like so far? I mean, we just launched today. <laughs> so I doubt you're gonna have a chance to kind of like dive into um, reactions, but like what's your experience been like as opposed to, you know, kind of the other panels in the industry? I would say it's 
with webtoons alone, it's so different just because the readership, it's very diverse. You have 50% female and male readers. And that gave me the ability to really just go 100% with creating the story and universe that I've always wanted to tell. Um, and in comparison to my YouTube channel with all these beauty tutorials and female-focused content, I really have to focus on creating content f for my female audience. So in this case with webtoons, I can really start um, diversifying my, um, my imagination and I can share other stories, a, a guy's perspective, a little boy's perspective, um, and really just carve out and create this little universe that I can't really do on my YouTube channel because on my YouTube channel, people just want to see me. So this platform gives me the ability, Webtoons, the ability to really just create the characters that I've always wanted to create and knowing that I'm not going to get judged or people are not going to say, oh, Michelle, I, I just want to see a makeup tutorial. <laughs> so <laughs> it's nice. I mean, I'm really excited about this. So, and then, Beth, you, like Michelle, are kind of coming to this from a different industry almost where you've had, like, all your success prior to jumping into comics. Like, so, like, what was, you know, what was your first encounter with geek culture? Mm -hmm. And, like, how has that kind of shaped your career and driven you from, you know, acting to comics? Yeah, um, again, it was Matt. We, he was um, always, growing up, was a super into every comic imaginable and games and everything. And it wasn't till later for me, actually, we were on the subway in New York and he was reading Saga. And I was like, what's that? And he was like, actually, Beth, like, you would love this stuff. And then, uh, he start, I, then I read Why the Last Man and then I totally started getting into it all from there. And then, yeah, I'm really, I'm loving, like, Siren's Lament, I just finished last night. And I'm, the Web 2 comics are so good and I'm so excited to be a part of it and humbled to be up here with all these incredible women. Like, the fact that you have a transgender woman as your lead, like, I had, that's groundbreaking. That's incredible. I'm, I'm so proud and happy and humbled to be here with all of you. Yeah. Proud geek! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> so, um, you haven't gotten to experience your fan community yet, but Caitlin, you certainly have. Um, like, what has your experience been like publishing and building the fan base within the community and kind of like being able to, let, you know, your comic has massive readership, you have tons of comments, like being able to see their reactions in real time and interact with your fans. Um, what has that been like for you? Yeah, um, okay, honestly, um, growing up, I've been drawing comics since I was like four years old. So I only had like three readers total who would read my comics up until like high school or I don't know, up until Webtoons actually. So going from three readers to thousands of readers, like that's, it was mind blowing. Um, and it really surprised me because people would actually message me, like because of the way that line Webtoon is formatted, um, creators can easily interact with their readers. <coughs> um, but anyways, uh, I have had people message me and ask or tell me things like, hey, I could really relate to this character. Um, you know, where Tangent Meter Sirens Met has helped me get through some um, tough times. And I think that's probably the most rewarding and best part of being a creator is being able to touch the lives of people that you haven't even met before. That's awesome. Um, for all the panelists, I think a, a good follow-up question to that is kind of like, are you, are you thinking about writing for a specific audience or a female audience or for the public? Like, what are you, what are you conscious of when writing your characters and thinking about who's going to read them? And this can go to anybody who wants to answer that. Uh, well, I'm sort of conscious about I specifically want young women to enjoy my work and uh, see themselves represented in the media. and having all these strong and funny characters and uh, just being able to get these exp experiences that n normally are like uh, very male dominated, these characters in a zombie ap apocalypse and stuff like that. But uh, I also want to write diverse male characters. I mean, there's a lot of like Jurassic World, which is an Okay, film, I guess, but uh, all the characters are, are the same, and they, they're all sort of jerks. And <laughs> I want to write kind men, and I want to write funny men, and I just want everyone to be able to read and enjoy the comic. I think whenever um, 
I'm just developing content in general, whether it's on my YouTube channel or um, any other uh, digital platform. I try my best to consider myself to be like a fan. You know, if I don't, if I love this, then I know that the people who follow me will love this. And this is this was the approach that I brought onto um, my own comic, Helios. When I was coloring it and drawing it and writing the story, I asked myself, do I love this? Is this something that I would enjoy? Because if I enjoy it, my followers will enjoy it. And I think that's so important to always stay true to uh, what you love and what you're creating because essentially it comes from a very authentic place. And I believe uh, the internet has opened up so many doors for different types of stories to be shared. And there's no such thing as a bad story. I mean, there's going to be someone who's going to love it. And if you keep that mindset in your head, you're always going to be developing something that you yourself enjoy. And I think that's the most important thing when you are a creator is you want to make something that you love because it is part hobby. Um, and if you're lucky enough, it's, it becomes a career. But if you're putting so much thought and you're all this time into developing something, you might as well love it and enjoy it yourself. Matt and I actually, we made sure in ours, we really wanted, we have a strong female protagonist, but we also have strong women throughout. Our villain is also a woman, and throughout the dense community, we have diverse, uh, all backgrounds, all, like, you know, sexuality is different. So we really, we really tried to, uh, to kind of, strong female characters in general was our goal, but as far as readership, we definitely are appealing to a male and female audience, I think, in ours, or that's our goal, hopefully. Yeah, I imagine for all of you, it's like a little bit of a balance for writing for yourself versus writing for your audience. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what? Uh, this is a this is a this is a interesting question that we you know kind of came up with, which is a little bit different for all of you because you're pretty much all coming to this through digital as opposed to print and the kind of the traditional like getting people into a comic shop or doing stuff at conventions and kind of hustling it in an artist alley. Um, but generally, you know, have you felt any resistance from either men or women? kind of like breaking into the field? Uh, well, in Finland, at least not in artist alleys or stuff, because uh, in Finland, artist alleys are like 95% female, and it's just girls. Which is unheard of. Like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's ge generally everyone's like, everyone has fun at artist alleys, but mostly it's female. But uh, I haven't had any negative experiences with career people of my work, but there's some commenters like, oh, only girls read this, uh, this sucks. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, well, uh, you don't have to read it if you think it's too girly for you. <laughs> yeah, the internet mm -hmm. trolls. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that happens to everybody. Yeah. And we have trolls up the wazoo, me and Kat, on, uh, for two broke girls. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's normal. Yeah. <laughs> um, for all the panelists, um, I'd love to hear like what other female creators or comics ins inspire you, like that you read, like when you're sort of maybe even a rut or just trying to get like going and get your creative juices flowing. Mm. I'm a huge fan of yours. I love <laughs> Sirens Lament, so I would say you. Yeah. <laughs> Caitlin's great. Caitlin's amazing. Oh, um, hmm. There's like a lot of really great mangas that I grew up watching or not watching, reading. Um, the creator of Full Metal Alchemist was actually a woman. Uh, Full Metal Alchemist, um, I'm so sorry, I'm so bad with names, um, but I have all the comics, that's so funny. Um, the creator of Nana was a woman too, and I, I loved Nana. Uh, Sailor Moon, of course, uh, Death Note. I don't, no wait, no, Death Note is it's not a woman. Yeah. It, w it was? I think it's by two men. Yeah. There's a writer and an artist. So like manga in general, I mean, I know a lot of people say that in in the comic world, it's dominated by men, but I feel like in the manga world, it's probably 50-50, because yeah. there's a lot of great female content um, within the manga industry. So that's, that was the comics I, I grew up reading and loving, and of course, you know, anime too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you want to go in? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, I feel like a lot of my Feblo webtoon um, girl creators are my inspiration as well. Like I've read Sanja's and um, Michelle's and um, Susanna's, and I'm I'm gonna be all over dense. Definitely. <laughs> like when it comes out, I'm gonna be like, ah! <laughs> but um, yeah, I just think it's really inspiring how all of us tell stories and have different approaches on stories in different ways, and we have different um, methods of delivering messages to our readers. Um, 
the comic, yeah, the, the comic industry has been super male dominated in the past, but I feel that, I strongly feel that women will be the ones to, you know, present brilliant and new ideas to the table. Yeah. Uh, about people who have inspired me, well, uh, first of all, my favorite comics of all time are by Kaoru Mori, a uh, female manga artist uh, who who's done Emma and Otoyo Megatari. And they're awesome because you can see that she's clearly drawing the things that she absolutely loves drawing. And she has a lot of fun with her work. It's super detailed. I don't know how she does it. And uh, of course, a lot of webcomic artists and just generally webcomics. I, of course, read all of the comics here. I didn't read yours yet, <laughs> but I'm going to be reading it after I get away from this panel. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, I have a lot of friends who are girls and draw comics, like my girlfriend Petra Norglund, who draws Prey Grace, uh, a web comic. Uh, it's sort of amazing because <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, she's a lot better at drawing than I am. So every day I get to see her drawings and be inspired and be like, oh my god, I can do this too, and I can be this good too if I practice real hard. That's awesome. Do you have a favorite superhero girl comic? Mine? Yeah. Oh, uh, right now I I really love the new Miss Marvel, yeah, for great. example, and um, Spider Man, uh, Bad Girl too, and also I got inspired by Sailor Moon because I grew up watching <laughs> watching <laughs> watching it. So yeah, there's there's a little Sailor Moon influence I think in Super Sonic Girl. <laughs> for sure. It's good though. It's great. Um, we have, how much time do we have left? Uh, we have about 15 minutes left. So if anybody would like to ask questions, there's a microphone right here. Uh, I'd encourage you to walk up to the mic and line up. I also have some questions from fans on social media. So I'll start with one of those, and then we can get to the, or if people are ready, they're already, I'll bounce back and forth. So yeah, we'll start, go ahead. Hey, so my name is Wesley, and I am a graphic designer, and I take it really professionally, and I'm just getting my wet comic out there. Um, I have one thing out there, and I'm writing to get this bigger, like, 50, 60 page thing out. So how did you guys really get your, like, fan base going and getting just notoriety and getting people viewing and just talking about your comic? Oh, yeah. We're not out yet. Well, think, uh, well all right. Yeah, well, I've had people ask me, like, hey, um, I'm interested in getting, like, my comics out there, and... Um, what do you suggest that I do? And like some people are like, I don't think I might, I, I don't know if I'm good enough for webtoons. And my biggest suggestion to them was, you know, just don't really care about what other people, what you think other people want. I'd say go for what you really like and what you're passionate about. And I think if you portray that in your comics, um, it'll eventually catch on to the, your readers and people will love it. Well, you have a, you've had your book up for a while too. I mean, what's your experience been like kind of marketing or has uh, it just been organic I've, growth? I've actually found it uh, really helpful to be networking with other, other artists because uh, there's a lot of people who read my comic and just uh, they read a lot of other comics too. And if people like retweet my, hey, my comic just updated. And if a lot of people retweet that or something, then it's going to be a lot of lot more people to to see it and maybe check it out. And I think my advice is just uh, be the biggest fan of your own work. So and portray that in the way that you market your comic. Like, hey, my comic's so good, and this episode <laughs> is really awesome, and people will generally believe you. And <laughs> <laughs> awesome! <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Hi. My name is Tiffany, and I'm a student at the University of Texas here at Austin. And I draw comics every week for my university's newspaper. And I really want to start my own web comic, but like I have an idea and a story, but I just don't know where to start. Do you have any idea of how to start a web comic or like how you started? Just any advice in general? Um, I could give you a suggestion on how I did it, because um, I can totally understand like you have this story and universe in your head, but you 
you're trying to find a way to just put it on paper, yeah, just put it out exactly, there. Yeah. So what I do for my myself is I listen to a lot of really epic music, anime music that inspires scenes, and I start drawing out like a really epic scene, whether it's a battle scene or like a romantic scene or something that you can build a whole story around. And that really helps me um, line everything up to tell that one moment in the story, the climax. So I work on the climax first, mm -hmm. and then I develop everything around it. So that's my recommendation. But I'm sure everyone here can they have something. I, I suggest to ask yourself some questions. Like, um, for example, Siren's Lament. I never worked with a fantasy like ever before, but um, you know, sirens are like mythological creatures, and they're kind of just evil because they, you know, lure people and kill them. But I was like, you know what? No. Like, what if? I switch that around. What if the sirens were the victims? And, you know, just keep asking yourself mm -hmm. questions, then you come up with answers, and I'm pretty sure you'll be inspired by that. Oh, thank you. Great suggestion. Uh, for me, uh, I just want to yeah, say yeah. something. <laughs> uh, for me, it's important to just, uh, I actually developed shoot around in, in one weekend. And oh. I just uh, started like, oh, this, this would be really funny and this would be really awesome. And then I just drew out the characters and I thought about it and then I just immediately started drawing the comic because uh, for me fluidity in working is really important and I want to just get things out there as soon as I can and just get feedback and based on that feedback you can improve your work. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's easy to get stuck in thinking about the story and just wondering about uh, how am I going to start this and stuff like that. But if you start it, there's a good chance it'll be good. So just okay. I'm rooting for you. Thank good you. Luck. <laughs> good luck. Hi, my name's Ali, and I'm <coughs> oh, sorry. My name's Ali, and I'm a big, big fan of Shoot Around. And I was wondering uh, if I know they asked what things motivate you, but. Surely, when you have bad days and days where you just don't feel like continuing doing things that you love, how do you motivate yourself to get back on the horse and keep going? That's actually a really good question because uh, when I first started, I was like, well, whatever if I'm having a bad day, I'm just going to draw anyway. But then I read an interview of Kaoru Mori, who I talked about before, and she said, well, if I'm tired, I'm just not going to draw because it won't be good. And that sort of inspired me to take more breaks and to wait for the actual mood of like, oh, I really want to draw this now. And I think that will translate to a better comic and uh, you can just see I'm enjoying myself and having fun with it. And I think it's important to ch take breaks and if you're sleepy, just sleep, unless you have a <laughs> deadline. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, that was my phone. <laughs> A good question. Um, I'm going to take one from the internet for a second, and then we'll get right back to the line uh, that kind of ties into that. Uh, from Ziumi, Ziumi, <laughs> Ziumi. Uh, what are your favorite and least favorite parts of working on your comics? Like, what's the thing you like doing the most, and what's kind of, I guess, maybe the most annoying or tedious task? Uh, I like the scripting po process. I like thumbnailing and thinking about what's going to happen in each episode. I don't like sketching because it's so much work. There's so much you have to put a lot of thought into it. Like, uh, what's going to be the ideal angle for this scene and stuff like that. And I love inking. Inking is my best, mm -hmm. my favorite part. And coming up with the dialogue is the fun part for me. I would say um, the most difficult part f developing a comment on webtoon webtoons is that it's such a new format. It's a long scroll, so you're scrolling up and down, and you're very limited to what you can reveal. It's not like a, a traditional book format where you can show or re reveal if you're turning the pages. So it was a lot of just you know experimenting, um, trial and error, failing a lot, failing till you just want to give up, and then going back at the drawing board again and just trying something different. Um, and the traditional methodology of of comic book, uh, comic books in a book format doesn't really apply to webtoons, web comics. So you really have to invent, reinvent the wheel again. So that was the most difficult part for me, and also maintaining um, the quality of art and coloring, because unlike manga, it's usually black and white. Um, you get so you get a, you could go really far with just inking and 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 
working in black and white, but in this case with color, you have to think about lighting, you have to think about the skin color, the makeup too, I have to think about everything, and <laughs> after a while you're like, oh my gosh, this is so overwhelming, but it's really fun because I, you start going out more and you start meeting people and you're inspired by everyday people that inspires a character in your story, so I think that's my favorite part out of everything is really just creating these characters that are inspired by people who've touched my lives, who've really influenced me in very meaningful ways. Um, and yeah, that's all I have. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I've been coloring. I actually released my comic at midnight, and I've been up late just coloring like crazy to meet the deadline. So that's the hardest, too, <laughs> is meeting the Webtoons deadline. It's You have to have a comic up every week. And I'm already struggling having one video up on my YouTube, so let alone with this. So it's going to be a challenge, but I'm always up for a challenge. You know, I think when an artist is met with a challenge, a lot of the times the artist will, will start breaking new grounds and you start discovering different parts and different facets of your artistic abilities when you're met with all these challenges. Yeah. <laughs> Deadlines are always a challenge. Yeah. I know Tom's looking at yeah. me. <laughs> like, Michelle, where's the comic? Like, yeah. uh, bro, I'm coloring right now. <laughs> yeah, we were all up last night on lot, like lining each other back and forth. I like, even messed him team, up. He, he messaged me. Team. He said, so is it is it ready yet? I'm like, bro, I'm so sorry, man. I, I fell asleep. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And he's like, what? I'm like, I'm just kidding. Here you go. <laughs> yeah. well, what wasn't the word I used, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> oh, anyone else? Um, is it weird to say that, like, actually enjoy the hardships and, <laughs> and, like, I don't know, like, in, you know, trying to get all, of, like, the dialogue and, like, drawing and stuff, like, sometimes it could be a struggle, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's really strange like probably the the hardest thing for me right now is that I'm still a student so I'm balancing like schoolwork and comic and deadlines and yeah that's, that's probably it <laughs> I think for Matt and I because we both come from cinematic we're both actors so we come from a very character heavy cinematic background so the webtoon format I think is gonna be our biggest we, we've only we have like our whole outline of the series, but we haven't, we're just starting now to work with the webtoon format and the art, our, we have an amazing artist. And so I think the hardest part for us is kind of, we want so much of this deep, intricate character development, but on the format, we have to balance that and work that into the art as well, but we're not doing the art ourselves. So like, I think the hardest part maybe would be conveying that to Sid, our artist, like exactly what's in our brain cinematically, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. Um, the hardest part for me is to think about the storyboard in a long format, but once I, ha I get it done, I enjoy a lot the inking process and coloring, and also my favorite part is to create characters, so I think that's the m most enjoyable part of the process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. um, let's go back to the line. Hi, um, my name's Amy, and I work with the Alamo Drafthouse Cinemas. We're a cinema chain, um, and we do uh, a lot of uh, a lot of fan stuff and fan culture. And um, there's been this history of of comic books being made into movies. Um, this summer, we have like it's nonstop. Um, <laughs> And I'm curious because several of you have come from different platforms. And so moving forward into the future, what kinds of platform crosses do you think are exciting? Like going from digital comics to TV or big screen or things like that. Like what kinds of things get, do you get excited about about crossing platforms? I would say besides uh, the traditional way of going into movies or TV, I mean, with the internet, you have all of these great new platforms that you can really explore. For example, Kung Fury, the shirt I'm wearing here, was a, crowd, a crowdfunded, crowdsourced movie, and it was a 30-minute movie that's on Netflix and YouTube, and it did really, really well, and that was all conceived with this trailer that this guy made, this te teaser trailer that people funded $600,000 to. Um, so I think there's a lot of opportunities outside of movies and TV where any of these li line webtoons IP can explore and they can develop real tangible, um, uh, like a, a show um, that lives on Amazon maybe if Amazon wants exclusive because you have all of these platforms like Amazon, Netflix, Facebook, YouTube, all of them are in a sense in a, in a platform war where they want the best content. So I think for us, you know, we have all these great opportunities to really explore and and, and really create a, a, a new type of format on those different platforms. Oh, 
I don't know if you guys had anything to say. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that's that was so true. Yeah. The hard funding was, that's true. It's the hey, my name is Cody. This is actually a good segue. I work at a company called Patreon, which is ongoing funding for artists and creators. Uh, and we have a really thriving and strong webcomic community. Uh, so if there's any aspiring webcomics or you're out there and you'd like to talk about it after, I'll just hang out. But uh, my question for the panel really is, um, you know, in, in the effort of funding creators and, and, and empowering the people that are making the content is what we strive to do. And I, I just wanted to see if, if you had any feedback in what you've seen in the community and other webcomics, if, if, if we are doing a good enough job at that or if there are things that we could do better with it. I actually have a Patreon page. <laughs> it's really new. I've only had it for like a few months, but... Uh, and well, many of our creators have patrons also. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what I really love about it is uh, anyone can sort of get, get paid if they have enough of an audience, and it's a fun way to share some behind-the-scenes stuff. And But uh, a lot of my friends who have Patreon were like, oh, I want to be able to block people, because there's a lot of people who get the content and then they share it on like online forums mm -hmm. but and stuff like that and it's really hurting some of the creators mm -hmm. and uh, I'd generally enjoy if Patreon took like spotlights of different cr creators and maybe not super successful ones but mm -hmm. like showcased the more minor people who are working on like internet videos and movies and uh, comics and stuff like that. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, good morning. My name is Verdell. Um, thanks for being on the panel. And I just had a quick question for the panel about finding artistic creators. Um, I have a lot of ideas for stories, and I'm really good at writing, but not so good at drawing. So if anyone had any ideas about um, sourcing um, an artistic partner, that'd be really cool. I can speak to that because Matt and I, it's been like a six month <laughs> process for us to find one. And uh, well, we had Tom as a resource, which really helped but uh, that was a real struggle for us because like you we were writing it so we have ideas in our minds but we're not actually as talented as these folks to be <laughs> able to draw it and color it and do everything ourselves um, so for us it was uh, just looking at a lot of people's materials pretty thoroughly and to be honest we were pretty picky like it took a long time and uh, and then to find someone who actually connects to your vision and I feel like our artist makes it better He's in fantastic. So uh, I would say take as much time as you need because it's such an important process. Um, and I know that we we really are happy now, but it took took a while. So yeah, and looking at as much as you can. Um, we kind of had a tag team of the three of us searching all over. I was searching for young. I, I really wanted female, and I was searching for young females at first. And yeah, so mm -hmm. there's know. there's two places where you can. Um, source really great artists. I mean, one, of course, the tried and true DeviantArt, and another oh, yeah. is ArtStation. And, but what I really recommend if you are going to end up doing a comic is you want to find an artist who can do sequential art, the storytelling, because it's so different than, it's a different type of artist, um, because they essentially have to create a story along with what your the words and, and everything that you're writing. And unlike a normal artist who would just create one piece at a time, this artist would have to create multiple, multiple pieces and they have to tell a cohesive story all in one. So that's my biggest recommendation is make sure they know how to do sequential storytelling. Mm, I have one thing I want to say. <laughs> uh, I really recommend you getting to know the ar artist so it's easier for you to work together on a tight deadline and uh, just tell them what you're looking for and uh, what you want to do and how often do you want to publish your comic and stuff like that and if you're going to pay them, talk, talk about that, but if it's going to be like just a fun project for you two to do, then just tell that and find someone who's excited about your ideas. Yeah. Thank you. I, I'll give you one Good more luck. piece of advice on that. Make sure when you approach an artist, you have a very clear pitch, outline, script, as much material as possible before you go out to them, because you're going to want them to take it seriously, and they're going to need to see that you take it seriously. Like, I wouldn't email. Mm -hmm potential artists blindly with just like a paragraph of I have a cool idea. You should have it really well formatted before you go out to them. Thank you all. Good luck. Uh, hi guys. Um, so I'm a big fan of uh, Siren's Lament, Tangents Meet with Kenny's Music, and Shoot Around. <laughs> and I read your comics like in the morning before I go to school because, you know, to entertain myself and full time. Uh, I was, I wanted to ask, like, do you guys ever get a kick out of the comments, like the top comments, and do they inspire the future storyline of the comics? 
Oh, do you want to answer first? Or? <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Actually, like, really get a kick out of <laughs> reading the comments. Like, um, I do read all of them. Uh, hmm. Like for my previous work, where tangents meet, like there was one antagonist, <laughs> and like everyone just hated her, and everyone was like writing songs about killing her and stuff. I was like, this is like, <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> like, I, I don't. I don't, I don't know, like, because usually I have like a story outline in my head, so I'm not really sure if it, um, if the author, if the readers' comments really inspire like the storyline of it. But I, I really do love them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I read all, all of my comments too, and uh, mostly I get a kick out of when people are like, "Oh, I hate this character," and I'm like, mm -hmm. uh, "She's gonna have a really traumatic experience later on." <laughs> Let's see how you feel about it when that happens. Uh, but uh, occasionally I've gotten some comments like uh, there's a few scenes where the dude characters are shirtless and everyone's like, oh yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. And Noting uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just I think it's really fun to interact with your readers and uh, I have a lot of more shirtless scenes pa planned out. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's great. We are exactly out of time. So uh, I'd like to thank you all for coming to our panel. We have some cool gifts for you as you exit.